They are as American as apple pie, beauty queens, adored and admired by little girls. But now it's little girls who are taking center stage in a controversial way that has captured America's attention. It's about perception. You have to appear perfect. Some people might say pageants put value on a girl's looks. It is not just about this. Tonight, we'll meet mothers searching for a dream, fathers trying to support their daughters, and young girls trying to find their place in the spotlight. The first pageant we ever did, I felt like a movie star. But when appearance is put front and center and young girls are displayed and judged, what lessons are they really learning? America, it can be inspiring and beautiful. It can also be dark and ugly. It's so many things, but it's ours. It's our America. In my 20 years of going inside stories around the world and across America, I'm constantly challenged to go beyond the surface. But certain worlds can look so shocking. We're gonna get things underway. It can be hard to not get wrapped up in appearances. It is time for beauty competition. The first time I found myself at a child beauty pageant, I was stunned. Here, it seemed superficial reigned supreme. Tons of makeup and hairspray have been applied, bodies have been tanned, lots of candy has been consumed, thousands of dollars have been spent. It was a reality show come to life. And at the center of the spectacle, little girls dressing and acting like grown women. It's a distinctly American phenomenon one that's drawn a wrath of disapproval. But as much as these pageants are condemned, we can't seem to look away. Who are these little girls, and what are pageants teaching them? Our story is perhaps best begun with the little girl at the top. This is a fast elevator. At just six years old, Eden Wood reigns supreme over the child pageant world. Right here, Eden? Good. In a culture obsessed by youth and beauty, it's a role that has earned her and her mother, Mickey, more than just tiaras. Yes, that six-year-old Eden Wood. Eden Wood. Eden Wood. Do you want to pick out the spot where you want your picture? Oh, I want it on the very top. On the very top, okay. Keep that for you, okay? How old was Eden when you first she entered her? She was 14 months. She was 14 months old. I saw that she had this ability, that she had this little spark. She is definitely America's favorite. Two years later, when Eden was three, a reality TV show approached Mickey, and together, the two pulled out all the stops. Woo! Get it, girl! Get it, baby girl! It was a move that won them what some consider to be the ultimate prize, celebrity status. Who'd have thunk it? Two years ago, she was just a little pageant girl. She's got a whole album. She's got 43,000 fans on Facebook. She's been to Australia and performed. And there's so much more. The sky's the limit. In this fantasy come to life, I catch a glimpse of the promise of pageants. Yeah, there you go, very pretty. A chance to rise above the ordinary boundaries of everyday life. It's a Cinderella story. The odds of it happening are astronomical. Do you think she's seen as hope for a lot of little girls? All things are possible. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm from a town of 566 people. So do I believe that they can? I believe that anything that you want and you hope for and you work and give it the best that you have to give, yes, they can. While it's not clear where this is going for Eden and her mother, it's a long way from where they started. In a small working class town in Arkansas. 
Not far from their hometown, two sisters are following in Eden's footsteps to find themselves through the world of pageants. It's through meeting 10-year-old Lauren Taylor and her 14-year-old sister Ashton that I learned that pageants can be about more than just pretty dresses. Did you not have self-confidence before you started pageants? Ever since second grade, we're making fun of me and calling me names. That said that I had crooked teeth and a big nose and fat and ugly. Before she became a beauty queen, Lauren Taylor was a fighter. Well, this elephant has been through every surgery I've been through, and it even still has the thing from my last surgery that I got. And I had a little camera down my throat to take pictures of my stomach. Born with Opitz syndrome, a rare disorder, Lauren Taylor faced many surgeries and lasting physical effects that other girls teased her about. When Lauren came home and said that kids were teasing her. As a mother, that was the hardest thing for me to watch. It was the hardest. Lauren Taylor's older sister was teased for different reasons. I was a quiet child. I never said anything. Introverted and shy, more interested in books than basketball, she didn't fit in. They're like, she doesn't play basketball. She's not part of us. I'm like, just because I don't play basketball doesn't mean I have to change for you. Ashton was taunted and bullied by other girls for her pretty face and her independence. After the situation escalated to physical threats and fights, she had to change schools. When you would get made fun of at school, how would that make you feel? It made me feel small. It really, like, you didn't belong. It was very cliquish at that school. Did you get made fun of a lot? Yeah, I did. You want this cup, I love Dad? Yeah. That's the one you want? Oh, I want that cup. Okay. Ashton and Lauren Taylor's mother, Rachel, was eager for a way to help her daughters gain a sense of control of the world around them. I can't decide if I'm going to wear a dress or I'm going to pay I told my husband, I said, what we need to do is I need a self-esteem coach. And I researched it. And finally I said, you know what? We may not even do pageants, but I'm going to hire a pageant coach just to work with them. It was Lauren Taylor who saw the promise of the pageant stage to help them both. Oh my gosh. She came and asked me, hey, Ash, do you want to do pageants? I said, what kind of pageants? She goes, glitz pageants with me. I said, OK, I'll do it. It's a surprising approach to put your daughters on a stage to be judged in order to improve their confidence. And it's not just any stage. In Conway, Arkansas, this is the big time. 420? With entry fees up to $600. Big hair, big smiles, big prizes. This is Hog Wild. It's based on the love of a local football team, but some families have driven across the country to get here. Now, can you tell everybody where you're from? I'm from Clarksville, Arkansas, where we love to grow peaches. I'm from Hendricks, Oklahoma, the Windy City of Chicago. And what is there fun to do in Arkansas? Uh, go to Walmart. Over the next three days, 54 girls from 10 months old to 18 years will go head to head, dress to dress, in five different categories. Remember, head turns first every time. Ashton and Lauren Taylor will compete in separate age divisions, but as they prepare for the first round, I see they're in it together. She brought me to pageant and leading me through this, helping me get my routine. Okay, your turn. Try to pick out outfits and music try to coach me, it was really funny. She really was kind of like the big sister for a split second. Me and her sisters from the start, ever since we were born, she's just been there for me all through my life. Now it's time to go before the judges to be scored on beauty and appearance. For two girls who were once teased for the way they looked, will their moment on stage transform the way they feel about themselves? Will the world of pageants treat them as kindly as they treat each other? For a shy girl like Ashton, teased for being beautiful, 
there was a time when she wouldn't have dared take center stage. Here, she's found an arena in which to shine. What's it like for you when you're on that stage? It makes you feel great. It makes you glow and think you're on top of the world. Today, even awkward moments like a costume mishap end in smiles. And that was Miss Ashton. Thank you, Ashton. What's your impression of her on stage? Oh, that yeah! <laughs> That's pretty cruel. I do it all the time. How'd you, hey. how'd you feel about your performance tonight? Um, unpredictable, but oh well. It's off the stage that I see Ashton has found her place. I realize I belong to a different family, a pageant family. Girls are like me here. Thank you, Allison. So it's nearly 11.30 p.m. and the first night of the pageant has ended. Today, the girls competed in natural talent and interview. Tomorrow, it's all about the glitz and everybody here is going to be waking up very, very early for the next round of competition. The next morning, the girls are all dressed up and ready for the main event, the beauty competition. The routines look simple, but they're carefully constructed and polished. No, no, too much eye movement. Yeah, not a lot of blinking. Good. Lauren Taylor gets some last minute tips from her coach. Big smiles, big eyes, up straight, face the judges. And remember, smooth, smooth. You'll do fine, girl. <laughs> For Lauren Taylor, this moment is all about putting her best face forward, proving that despite the obstacles of her past, she can shine as brightly as the rest. I like getting up on stage, and I like showing my smile and big eyes. And when the lights hit me, I'm just like shining. And being all that pretty makeup, it just makes me feel a whole lot prettier. It makes me feel a whole lot better. As I watch Lauren Taylor revel in her moment in the spotlight, I realize that for her and for many of these girls, feeling beautiful is what it takes to feel okay with themselves. It seems like it shouldn't be this way, but it's a feeling many women can relate to. Beauty is such a huge part of any girl's world. Back in New York City, Eden Wood and her mother Mickey have scored front row seats to a fashion event. While Eden might be the only six-year-old at this show, She's not the only girl exposed to these notions of beauty. We all are. I do sometimes wonder about where we place value in society. Everything that our society is is based around beauty. I didn't make the rules, I didn't make it that way, but it is that way. As society shows us its expectations of women, little girls across America are watching and learning about what it takes to get noticed. Are pageants a symptom of these expectations or a platform for promoting them? It's the mimicking of sexy moves and scantily clad outfits. In other words, the mimicking of grown women that have brought child pageants under fire. I can remember when we came out with the showgirl routine. It was like, oh my goodness. I never, it never, call me naive, call me whatever you want to. It was the glamorous feathers, the color, it was Hollywood. And until that was pointed out to me by people outside of the industry, 
that, oh my gosh, she put her, do you know they don't wear tops and they don't have backs. Where? But do you, but do you, Mickey, do you see why people would say that? I mean, these, these outfits are, but see, I are don't. teeny I, I, tiny, I, 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 scantily. Honest, there is not anything that I have put my daughter in that I thought was inappropriate. Regardless of Mickey's intentions, I wonder if Eden is setting a new standard, a new example for other girls and their parents. In the back of an ordinary class of third graders in Nebraska, a little girl has big dreams. I love getting my hair done. I like dancing. I like makeup, of course. Eight-year-old Keisha wants to be a beauty queen. I think I would do really good because my personality, that's what I think. I knew it was something she wanted to try, and I thought, well, you know, if this makes her happy, then, you know, we'll see. We'll try one and see how it goes. Her mother, Capra, wants to do what she can to support her daughter's dreams. Yeah, doing it. I'm putting sparklies on Sissy's dress. But her father, Keith, didn't like the looks of the world his daughter wanted to enter. I didn't even know anything about pageants, and they had been watching this show. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, no. No, this ain't happening. Like millions of other Americans, Keisha and her mother got their first glimpse of pageants and its stars on TV. I wanted to be like Eden Wood because she does so good and she just loves doing pageants. Real famous. It's on, girls. I don't get why you girls watch this. I don't want my kids doing this. I don't want my kid acting like this. Didn't think a seven-year-old should be wearing makeup. It took us about two weeks to talk him into it. Keisha and her mother started small. No glitzy dresses, no makeup. And then something happened. Keisha won. It's such a rush, not just for her, but for me too. The adrenaline is just awesome. When we started doing the pageants, um, she was real shy. So it was just amazing to see her up there and just being able to make eye contact with people and talk to anyone. She didn't always have that. I think that's really important because I know myself, I don't have that confidence. That's hard to be okay with who you are. To be okay with who you are. It's something 24-year-old Capra has struggled with her entire life. I came from a very broken home, and both of my parents are alcoholics, so um, confidence is not something I have because I still to this day feel like, well, I wasn't good enough for my parents to change. How am I good enough for anyone else? So um, I don't have confidence at all. When she was just six years old, Capra was removed from her mother's custody and sent to live with her grandmother. She was only 15 when she herself became a mother. At 15, I decided um, against everybody else's judgment not to give her up for adoption. I knew that I could be a good mom and that I needed to take care of her. I just want her to feel like she's worth more than what her family history is. I remember being on welfare as a kid, and my mom was laying on the couch drunk. I don't want her to have those memories. I want her to have happy memories. Mommy, are you ready? Yes. Up next is Keisha. Capra is trying to give her daughter the kind of childhood she never had and the world of pageants seems to promise just that. But where will a path paved in glitter lead? Oh, good job! <laughs> to a perfect upbringing or just the illusion of one? Keisha's father still has concerns. Kids are meant to be kids, not, not be little adults making them seem like they're more than that is wrong. 
Well, I see it as a big game of dress up. And I get to spend time with my daughter. Despite Keith's misgivings, Keisha and Capra have set their sights higher, and they're going to learn from the best, Mickey and Eden Wood. They're headed to a two-day workshop and pageant 200 miles away in Kansas City. Oh my gosh! White is really a really pretty thank color. You, thank you. It's here that for the first time, Mickey and Eden Wood will share the secrets to their success. I sewed the top and made the skirt. How long did this take to make? A week. Come on, y'all, let's get started. A lot of sparkle. Like anything, pageants can be learned. Tomorrow, these little girls will compete against one another, but today, they'll be schooled in glitz. Just like an Olympic gymnast doesn't get to the Olympics by going to the gym once a week, there is a certain playing field that you have to play by the rules on. And in glitz pageants, there are standards. Lesson one, if you want to make it to the top, you have to go all in. How much money would you say you've spent on pageants over the last six years? Uh, I would say, you know, close to $100,000, you know. Um, people go, oh! <gasps> But if you see that your child excels at something, that's what we're, you know, that's what we're here to do, to enable them, to help them. You'll never win your money back in a pageant setting. It's not set up that way. It's a very expensive industry. It's a very precise industry. You have to play the game. What it boils down to is, does your child love it enough that you're willing to sacrifice to do whatever. You can't halfway do it. Lesson two, it's all about the uniform. Let me have kids up here that want their clothes critiqued. Now, you're not gonna like me very much, That's okay. but I'm gonna be honest. Color is beautiful. I love bright colors, but not for her. The bodice is too big. No socks that match the dress. Just your white socks and your little white Mary Janes. I don't like this layer. Let me try something right quick. Oh, yeah. Tan her dark. I, you know. As Mickey lays out the look, tanned skin, white socks, $1,000 designs, I wonder if Capra's homemade dress will cut it. All right, come here, Miss Blue. Um. It's, it's very different. I personally don't know how it would score because it is so unique, which brings to the topic of you have to conform. It seems to be the biggest lesson, having the right dress, the right hair, the right makeup. At just eight years old, Keisha is learning to obsess about something many women will worry about the rest of their lives trying to conform to one idea of a perfect image. Would you have any hope of winning without wearing that stuff? You better be able to, because this... I don't know. It's I, a game. Yeah. You have to play, you have to jump through the hoops. What are some of those rules of the game? The tanning, the hair pieces, the makeup. So she will be tanned? E mm. Yes. No. He doesn't, just, it, <laughs> he's so uncomfortable with this. <laughs> so much for not tanning, huh? Yeah, so much for not tanning. I, 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 I wish I could put my foot down harder but I also don't want to get in trouble. Are you excited to see her tomorrow? I, I, I am. I'm really excited to see what she can do in something that she's never done before. If she doesn't do anything more than congratulate everybody else, whether she got anything or not, that's, that's more enough reward for me. Whether or not she wins, Keith hopes his daughter will learn how to be a good sport 
But what is Keisha learning about doing whatever it takes to be beautiful? And is there a line that Capra won't cross? I'm beginning to see that in many ways, life is like a pageant. We strive to meet expectations, we compete for prizes, and we are judged. As a teen mom from a broken family, Capra grew up no stranger to judgment and learned early on how to deflect it. I was raised by my grandma because my parents chose to drink instead of take care of me. She was very, very strong on perception. Everything has to be perfect on the outside. Make sure you comb your hair, make sure you're wearing makeup, make sure that your clothes are ironed. That's how I grew up. I'm sure it was her trying to protect me because maybe she thought that people would perceive me less than what I was. Capra took the message to heart. If you looked good enough on the outside, people might not see you struggling on the inside. Today, she's hired a makeup artist to create a perfect face for her daughter. These pageants, it, it means more than just making my daughter look pretty. Maybe this is another way of trying to look perfect. But perfection is elusive. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the green. We'll be fine. These colors are very popular in the girls' pageant anyway, so. I actually kind of like what color are you going to put on it? Uh, just a darker color on okay. the crease area. OK. okay. It's almost 9. It's almost 9? Yeah. Okay, start with babies first. I know. So without further ado, we are going to get started. While Capra and Keisha struggle to get ready backstage, the pageant kicks off with a reminder of the reason they're all there, Eden Wood. Eden, the star of today's pageant, is a tough act to follow. They're starting. And backstage, Keisha is still in disarray. <gasps> oh my gosh, where's my mom? Mom? Oh, it broke? This has been hanging there. It just broke. It oh. just had to broke. We are going to move on to our six to eight age division. We're going to get ready for our group lineup. As the minutes tick by and Keisha is still not ready, Capra sees their chances of winning slipping away. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you? We are missing one contestant. I'm gonna freak out. Her hair is like Don't pick, frizzy. No, honey, I promise, okay, it's here. not that bad. Oh my God. Take a breath. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your six to eight age division. Keisha will lose points for missing the lineup for her age group. But when she finally takes the stage, she gives it her all. Keisha! For Capra, all the anxiety, all the mishaps, are worth this one shining moment. When people see her on that stage, they just know that she looks amazing. They don't know that her mom was, you know, pregnant when she was a teenager. And, you know, that's a good feeling. I don't feel so screwed up. I feel just normal. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Keisha, contestant 41. Keisha's first appearance is everything Capra could have hoped for. On stage, her little girl was transformed. Did I do okay? You did awesome. All right. I think it's easy for people to criticize a lot of the parents of these pageant kids. But we can't deny the fact that we live in a society where looks matter. 
Could they be just preparing their daughters for what to expect in the future? Backstage, I meet two little girls who, together with their mother, seem to be going against the glitter. Is there another curling iron? Because I can help her. Where are you from, sweetie? From Dubuque. From Dubuque? Mm -hmm. And how many patents have you been in? Oh, okay. This is my second one. So there's this little family from Iowa, and the girls are really shy, and they look a little out of place because their dresses are a bit more conservative. And I just wonder how they feel to be amongst all of these very glitzy, glamorous little girls. Ten-year-old Carlin and her six-year-old sister, Rihanna, are also new to pageants. But unlike most of the other girls, they've decided to compete in a more natural style. There's some serious girls here, huh? Yeah. What do you think about them? Mm -hmm. It really doesn't matter because we're just having fun and doing the best we can. Next in our competition, give it up for Miss Carlin! I notice your girls on stage, they're not the most glitzy or sparkly. Is that intentional? Yeah. I mean, I like the girls more natural. I want makeup to be enhancing. I want my girls to be known for their personality and their inner beauty. Do you think they feel intimidated at all by all the glitziness? A little bit. Not a lot. You know, Rihanna, she's pretty oblivious to it. She's six. She can still look past that and just have fun. Carlin really wanted to be glitzy today. And she's glitzy enough for mom. <laughs> And I think she's satisfied. Big round of applause for all of our contestants and their beauty wear. Okay, close your eyes. A quick outfit change brings another chance to step into the spotlight. But the outfit of choice category has a decidedly different feel. It's here that I'm reminded of the controversy. Please welcome to the stage, Keisha! What do you think of the, the sexualized outfits? I think that they... <sighs> Fun outfits is what I think. And I think that when she starts to develop as a teenager, you know, the outfits are going to have to be toned down. Yeah. You're and not she, putting your kid out there to look like that. They're going out to have fun. Yeah. You know, they're, they are kids. Kids, yeah. I think, I mean, her little outfit, it's cutesy. Are you okay with it? Do you think it's sexual? Um, yeah. You do? Uh, I think it's, it's cutesy, but it's right there at that point. I'm a simple person, and this stuff isn't simple for me. Yeah, contestant 52. We are going to start crowning. In child beauty pageants, everyone wins a prize. There are categories for best hair, prettiest eyes, prettiest smile. Next, you have the best eyes competition. We had a tie. Please give it up for contestant 41, Keisha, and 46, Rihanna. <laughs> Prettiest Smile Award, Keisha. <laughs> We're gonna move on to awarding our queen and princesses. Here, every girl that participates is a princess, but there can only be one queen. And rounding out the queen for this age division. Please give it up for contestant number 43, Miss Emma. And today, it's not Keisha. Oh, yeah, good girl. You did so good. I cannot believe it. One more big round of applause for your elite supreme. 
You have the prettiest eyes and the prettiest smile. Yeah, you did so good. Oh, yeah. You are amazing. Thank you. You are so good, honey. While Keisha's disappointment is evident, I'm reminded that these trophies are not just for the kids. Capra is experiencing her own sense of failure. The length she went to help her daughter win didn't work, and she struggles to understand why. I paid you money, and you didn't do what I wanted you to do. And she missed going on stage, so that's, and she had to go at the end of her age group because you were still doing her hair. Capra is uh, berating the makeup artists because she thinks that it was her fault uh, that her daughter didn't get a sash, so things are kind of unraveling as we speak. For future references, not all moms are going to be able to get their way when it comes to hair and makeup and stuff. Then why would I hire somebody to do it? Why would I pay yeah, them I'm to do saying, something? I was working on it, and it's just that you, it just wasn't good enough. You need to relax, please. Come on, I'm done. I'm just so disappointed in myself. I felt like if I didn't hire hair and makeup, I was gonna hurt her chances of winning. You know, sometimes you get caught up in that. I let her down if she doesn't win because I know that Keisha did her best. I just, I don't know, I blame myself for it. I know I could have done better and did I let things go? Yes, I let things go. Good job. Come on, let's go. Okay. I can't. I'm crying. And Why? I'm filming. Come here. While he may have let some things go, I see that Keith doesn't give in when it matters the most, being there for his daughter. She's going to be OK, right? Oh, yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah. We just need to relax. Come on, honey. But back in Arkansas, the results of Hog Wild are yet to be decided. In Arkansas, the competition is winding down. It's been a good day for Lauren Taylor and her sister Ashton. But there's a missing element for this pageant family. Their dad is a huge pageant dad, and it's very unusual that he's been gone this long, but it's very hard for him to come in because they're working seven days a week. So does your dad know the routines? Yes. 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 Yeah, he helps coach us. <laughs> yeah. This is perhaps the biggest surprise about my visit to the pageant world. Just how involved not only mothers are, but fathers too. Go pretty girl. When I saw this little girl on stage and her dad coaching her from the audience, when she ran into his arms afterwards, um, despite the, the hair, the makeup, the tanning, and all that, um, made me a little emotional. After the dresses and makeup come off, the opportunity to spend time together continues. And it's easier for me to see that there's room for more than just a beauty competition. As I look at these girls, I realize that here, pageants have given them real-life experiences. They seem to have found a place to belong, to shine as themselves, and maybe some insight on how to win and lose. I've been doing pageants for about three and a half years. I've been doing pageants since I was 18 months old. Since I was a baby? About six. Since I was really little. Since I was three, but I stopped, and then I started back again. I just started last year. We met at a pageant. <laughs> it's hard getting over your ner when you're nervous. <laughs> and usually I get butterflies before in my stomach. I get kind of scared. <laughs> but then I just did it, and it felt good. When I get into it, I'm not that nervous anymore. Yeah, and you should build up the, se the self confidence to do other things, and you're not a shy. I would not be able to stand here and do this interview if I was not in pageants. <laughs> If pageants try to make little girls look like grown women, it strikes me that on the inside, too, they seem to be growing beyond their years. I think I have a really 
good chance of winning tomorrow. I thought I did really good, and everybody else said I did really good. You never know. We it never depends know. on what the judge is like. If you don't win the pageant, all you have to do is try to cheer on the person that gets a higher title than you. If I don't win, I just go on and like do another pageant. You like, have another chance of yeah. a higher chance. You always have another chance. And I'll Unless still you get old. The hardest thing about pageants is trying not to cry during <laughs> getting my hair on. <laughs> I don't like how TV shows uh, the kids that act bad and stuff, and pageants really aren't like that. They're really fun, and you just do them to have fun, and I wouldn't do them if I didn't have fun. When I leave here tomorrow, I'm probably gonna go, get on Facebook, and tell what I won. Yeah, if I did win. Yeah. And when I leave tomorrow, I'll be sad because I won't get to see my friends. I know! We are beginning ready to have our dance contest. We just thought that it would be kind of cool if we did a sexy legs contest. Come on, Mr. Steve. Hurry. You think Mr. Steve's got sexy legs? Give him a shout out. After a long day of fun and games, tired girls are tucked into bed and the judges tally up the score. But the late night brings an early reward for Ashton and Lauren Taylor. Their father has driven seven hours from his welding job in Tennessee just to see his girls through crowning. which is really special to me, because he's also been there for me. It makes me feel really good when I'm with him. So have fun. I like you doing this. For these sisters, it's moments like this that mean more than tiaras. The next morning, Ashton takes home the bigger title, Natural Grand Supreme and a $400 prize. But Lauren Taylor enjoys her sister's moment of triumph as if it were her own. I know if I don't win, then she will. And it just makes me feel even more happy when she wins. Back in Nebraska, the results aren't as easy to decipher. Despite their disappointment at the Cutie Patootie pageant, Keisha and Capra's enthusiasm has grown. Capra has even started her own line of pageant dresses to help pay their way. My favorite dress would have to be probably her denim bride dress because it's just got a really big wow factor. This one took a lot of hard work and I'm pretty proud of it. <laughs> Capra firmly believes that pageants have been a good thing for her daughter that they brought her something that Capra never had. I can remember not being good enough. I wasn't skinny enough. I wasn't pretty enough. And I think my daughter has confidence in herself. And I think that, you know, that's happened because she's been in these pageants. For his part, Keith is still on the fence. We're going to that pageant Catch. in Indiana. Catch! And we need to... Okay, you did decide on Hello, Daddy. Well, I paid okay, for okay. it. So, oh, well, yeah, I know you paid for Well, it's us. a Western pageant, so... Okay. My wife is somebody who has struggled her whole life with her appearance. Whether it was justified or not, I, I say no. I, I think she's perfect in every way. What I hope for my daughter is, is that she learns to not care what people think about her, but to care what she thinks about herself. Oh, well, thank you. It doesn't matter what you look like to other people. It matters how you feel about yourself. I know you know. 
So why do you know that I know that you know? We make it very clear that she doesn't have to be perfect. Keith and I as parents will love her even if she's not. Because guess what, we're not perfect. We're not perfect parents. When you get off a stage, you're just a normal person. And you have flaws just like everybody else. You know, you, you can't always be perfect. And I just hope that she can continue to see the difference between being on the stage and being off the stage. <laughs> it will be up to Keith and Capra to set boundaries. Up to all the parents I've met to help their daughters grow up to feel good about themselves in a world that celebrates appearances. Even Mickey Wood knows that their quest for fame is paved with potential pitfalls. She loves this, yeah. What little kid wouldn't love it? She loves the stage. But I'm her mama, and I got to make sure she grows up right. The worst possible thing that I could imagine would be to have her turn out like some of the horror stories we hear about child stars. If it gets to the point where she doesn't get to see her daddy, and we don't get to go home. Stop at the corner. I don't know. We'll stop. And I mean that.